Welcome to Predictive Analytics and Finance. This self-running presentation provides a high-level understanding of what predictive analytics does, why it's needed, and what it's worth, all in less than 10 minutes. A more detailed version of this presentation is available that addresses the issues in greater depth. The purpose of this one is to make you aware of them. The focus of this presentation is on the finance objective shown on the screen, and more specifically, why organizations have difficulty achieving them and how predictive analytics can help. We'll come back to this screen shortly, but first, let's quickly summarize the key messages. Many organizations have implemented, or are implementing, enterprise performance management applications to improve planning, budgeting, forecasting, reporting, and other financial management processes. But as they become more complex, many are finding that these tools aren't sufficient to meet the objectives we just reviewed. Simulation-based predictive analytics provides incremental capabilities that address underlying EPM capability gaps. In so doing, they enable step change improvements to how organizations plan and manage their business that can be worth upwards of 5% of sales to your bottom line. Smaller and less complex organizations typically find that traditional EPM tools meet most, if not all, of their needs. However, as organizations exhibit more of the complexity characteristics shown on the screen, capability gaps become more evident. From this point forward, views presented in this presentation relate to such companies. It's important to note that these gaps are smaller in next-generation EPM applications, as they provide capabilities that traditional EPM applications do not. Some of these differences are noted on the screen, with more detail provided in the article and self-running presentation shown at the bottom right of the screen. Symptoms of these EPM capability gaps lie in the finance objectives that we started off with. Pick a finance-related research study, and it's likely to mention that organizations are struggling to achieve the objectives shown on the screen. And these struggles can persist, despite investments in EPM technology. Many of these finance challenges are being experienced in operational circles, which is why they are being reported in operationally focused studies. These are highlighted in yellow. Others which are specific to supply chain are shown in white. Further evidence of EPM capability gaps can be seen in the business objectives organizations seek to achieve. Countless research studies show that these are the ones presenting the greatest challenges. What's common to these challenges is that they are all cross-functional in nature. Organizations that struggle with these financial, operational, and business challenges often experience unwritten rules, examples of which are shown on the screen. What are they? They're the way that people believe that they must behave to be successful in organizations. These behaviors are driven by a set of beliefs, the most prevalent of which is that target setting and resource allocation isn't fair. And underlying such beliefs are the same EPM capability gaps. The common denominator across all these challenges is an inability to effectively connect inputs and outputs, especially when doing so in complex organizations across multiple functions, business units, product lines, and customer segments. So what is it about EPM that causes this problem? The primary factor is that they have immature planning models that aren't able to maintain the connection between targets and resources as conditions change. The implications of immature planning models is that organizations lack insight, speed, and coordination required to optimize enterprise performance. Models result in inaccurate and incomplete analysis, processes are slow, and functional silos inhibit the free flow of resources. In contrast, what organizations need from planning models is the ability to support the business capabilities shown on the screen. Predictive analytics provides three specific business capabilities that address EPM capability gaps. Details of these capabilities are provided in a separate presentation. What you need to know about them now is that they specifically address these insight, speed, and coordination challenges. What modeling logic does predictive analytics provide that EPM does not? Key differences are shown in the 12 boxes shown on the screen. A separate presentation is available that goes into detail on each one. For the purpose of this presentation, what you need to understand is that these differences exist and that they support the three business capabilities addressed on the previous slide and which are shown in the middle of the screen. Provided on the screen is a summary of cases where predictive analytics has been used to address strategic, financial, and operational business issues. What you'll notice is that the value realized in all these cases it all exceeded $100 million. 
and what's common across all these cases is that they all exhibited the complexity characteristics that were addressed earlier. The value underlying these cases stem from an inability to manage complexity, especially when defining and deploying strategy across functions, business units, and legal entities. In such cases, the capability gaps we addressed earlier leave organizations vulnerable to value erosion stemming from the sources shown on the screen. Research studies have quantified this value erosion in different ways, examples of which are shown on the screen. One estimates the cost of complexity to be between 3 to 5 percent of sales. Other, others quantify this value in terms of the ability to sustain cost reductions and realize the full value of strategy. The results of these research studies are not out of line with the cases that were just presented. As such, they are good places to start in estimating the value of predictive analytics to organizations. One of the key takeaways from this presentation is that there is a significant gap between the modeling capabilities supported by EPM and predictive analytics. So before developing an EPM strategy, organizations need to assess the nature of this gap and the extent to which it will affect them. One thing to note is that this maturity model is explained in further detail in a separate presentation. Undertaking a gap assessment requires an understanding of your objectives for improving how you plan and manage your business. Provided on the screen are some key objectives that should frame decisions about the use of predictive analytics. Note that a separate self-running presentation is available that explains these criteria in more detail. The output of a gap assessment should comprise a graphic similar to the one shown on the screen. In complex organizations, what becomes obvious is that EPM can't fully support all these objectives. This is depicted by the EPM capability gap label denoted on the screen. The point here is that organizations often assume, often assume that EPM will meet all these objectives, when in fact, this is not always the case. The questions noted on the screen summarize some of the issues addressed in this presentation. If you answered yes to most of them, your organization could potentially benefit from the use of predictive analytics, especially for those involved in the manufacturing and supply chain sectors where complexity tends to be greater than others. If these questions were relevant to your organization, you should consider doing a short diagnostic that addresses the three questions shown on the screen. This is especially relevant to organizations that are about to purchase EPM technologies or launch EPM projects. In such cases, you may want to consider stopping or postponing them. This is because it becomes increasingly difficult to refocus or redirect projects once they've been launched. If the issues raised in this presentation are relevant to your organization, one next step would be to view the detailed version of this executive presentation. It provides more in-depth discussion about the topics shown on the screen. Also available from the IBP Collaborative are other self-running presentations that address other topics such as the ones shown on the screen. The key takeaway from this presentation is that EPM, while an essential tool, will not always be sufficient to fully support all finance objectives. Many complex organizations find themselves in situations where planning and forecasting processes remain problematic despite having Im invested in EPM tools that are generally regarded as being market leaders. Predictive analytics is a significant addition to the finance tool bag and should be something to which forward-looking finance executives devote increasing attention. Please feel free to use the contact information provided on the screen if you have any questions or comments about the material contained in this presentation.